We are going to start making our way through the Godot documentation. We have to first start with the key concepts. I will be transparent here. I am reading from the documentation and will sometimes quote it verbatim. As always, links to the documentation can be found in the description. Let's get started. There are four core concepts that you will need to understand as they will be what you are manipulating in Godot, those being nodes, scenes, signals, and the scene tree. If we think of our game as building blocks, we can see that everything is nested within each other. Every game engine revolves around abstractions you use to build your applications. In Godot, a game is a tree of nodes that you group together into scenes. You can then wire these nodes so they can communicate using signals. These are the four concepts you will learn here. We're going to look at them briefly to give you a sense of how the engine works. In Godot, you break down your game in reusable scenes. A scene can be a character, a weapon, a menu in the user interface, a single house, an entire level, or anything you can think of. Godot's scenes are flexible. They fill the role of both prefabs and scenes in some other game engines. You can also nest scenes. For example, you can put your character in a level and drag and drop a scene as a child of it. Let's do that. Just so we can see it in action, let's start by saving our current scene as the main scene for now. I am then going to create a new tab here. Create a root node that is a 2D character body. Rename it to player with the F2 key on my keyboard. Save it and drag it into the main scene. With what we just did, we nested a scene within a scene, making it kind of like a node. However, scenes are not nodes. Scenes are made of nodes. A scene is composed of one or more nodes. Nodes are your game's smallest building blocks that you arrange into trees. If we look at the player that we made, it's missing some components, hence this triangle warning. But you can see that we can add all kinds of nodes to it. In fact, you must if you want it to work, as we have written it. We are also working in 2D right now. The node names end with 2D because this is a 2D scene. Their 3D counterparts have names that end with 3D. Older versions of Godot called these nodes spatial nodes. If we look at all of this going on over here on the left, where we are nesting scenes and nodes, this is called the scene tree, which is literally a tree of scenes. And as scenes are trees of nodes, the scene tree also is a tree of nodes. But it's easier to think of your game in terms of scenes as they can represent characters, weapons, doors, or your user interface. And the last concept that we have to look at is signals. Nodes emit signals when some event occurs. This feature allows you to make nodes communicate without hardwiring them in code. It gives you a lot of flexibility in how you structure your scenes. Signals are Godot's version of the observer pattern. A very, very high level of what this means is just that there is some code somewhere that watches for changes in other classes and objects. When those conditions are met, code from the observer is fired off to do any manner of things. For example, buttons emit a signal when pressed. You can connect to this signal to run code in reaction to this event, like starting the game or opening a menu. Other built-in signals can tell you when two objects collided, when a character or monster entered a given area, and much more. You can also define new signals tailored to your game. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for making it all the way through. If you enjoy content like this, please be sure to like and subscribe. See you next time.